can anybody stop the man they call the Dominator? We'll find out very shortly. This is the first event. It's the Fingal's Fingers. Six men have gone already. And as you can see, Jarek Dimik from Poland is the leader with 38-28. Let's pick up commentary now with our team led by Nick Hawley. Thanks very much, John. Tom O'Mitt will be hoping for better luck in the fingers than he had in his heat. And he's up against the biggest man in this whole field. Weighing in at 402 pounds, big Dominic Filiu. Filiu blasted through the fingers in his heat. Tom O'Mitt turned the fifth finger over about two seconds outside the 75 seconds allowed. It really was a, a heartbreaker for him, but he still finished second in his heat. And away they go. It's a race against the clock, and it's a race against each other as well. And right now, it's the big fella from Canada that looks like he's made the fast start. Filiu has to be the favorite here. Not only is he the taller man, but he's also got the body weight advantage to push against these. Fastest man of anybody in the qualifiers at this. And you know what? He looked like he could have gone faster. Yes, Filiu is making a mockery of the difficulty of this. They always say, if you turn over five, that is extra special. But look at this. Filiu is just blasting through. Look at that clock. 38-24. Beat that. 37-second world record under threat there. That certainly put him into the lead. Now, Tom Omit has got a bit of a bone to pick with this number five. So close in the heats. Well, can he beat the clock this time? Well, he's got his revenge on the clock. He's done all five. That will guarantee him a good score, and he's done it in just under the minute as well. 59.06 for Mitt, but Dominic Filiu that time is going to take some beating. The key to Filiu's success is just his size. Locks his elbows out and drives through with his body weight. Managed to finish it before he tired. Well, the next heat puts together the favourite Yes, <laughs> Paris against one of the dangerous dark horses, Jesse Murunde. Now, if they both perform to their best, they will both knock all five of these through their axis. They will Take all go, positions. so we'll be looking at the clock. And remember, Filiu, 38.24, Mitt, 5906. And it's the American that's off to the flyer. He's got a slight lead here. Well, throughout the entire international circuit this year, these two guys have been neck and neck. Pudzianowski just getting the better of him at each contest. But this is probably Jesse's favorite event. Just starting to slow there, and Pudzianowski starting to catch him up. 38-24 is the lead, and that's going to be under threat here. Here comes Morunde. We could be on for a world record here. Look at that. 34.27 absolutely blown it out of the water two and a half seconds faster than any man has ever done it before and Marius was caught looking over and I think he suffered well indeed he has he let his concentration go and there was a look of disgust as he put that fifth one down at 51.64 that will cost him some places Nick, I think it's time for a sixth finger, isn't it? So many athletes doing all five, but for Marunde, this will be remembered forever. Indeed, Jesse Marunde, new world record holder, is talking to Bill Kazmaier. Jesse, first World Strongest Man final, first win, really impressive. How good does that feel? Yeah, it feels great. I know what I got to do, uh, points-wise. Uh, I anticipate losing some events to Marius, so the events that I'm good at, I need to really push myself. Uh, I think I made up about seven points on him here, so that's a good lead. He'll gain a bunch of those back, but I just got to hope that he doesn't gain too many back and that uh, the advantage it gives me holds for a while. So first blood to the American, Jesse Marundi, five fingers in 34-27. What an impressive performance that was. Yarek Dimmick, the leading pole at the moment, Kuzinovsky back in eighth. Is this a blip or a sign that he's vulnerable? Hello, I'm Ralph Speer, I'm from Austria, I'm here for the World's Strongest Man. Join us after the break, don't go. Thanks to Ralph and his mates. The next test for the athletes is the Hercules hold. Ralph has managed to keep a hold of these 353 pound pillars for almost 10 seconds longer than anybody else as we join the last four competitors. Well, they always say 30 seconds is a, is a benchmark really for the Hercules hold. If Don Pope comes up knowing at 30 seconds will have you in last place in this field 
We really are talking world-class strongman here. The question is not can Don get to 30. That would be poor. How far further than 30 seconds can the big man from Cleveland, Ohio do? We saw one man break a minute in the heats, Jesson Paulat, but he didn't make it to the final. Will Fraser Tranter's world record of one minute three be broken in this final? Well, he's looking very solid and steady so far. But when it goes on the Hercules hold, it goes in the blink of an eye. You're looking good, and then all of a sudden, the tank hits zero, and you're finished. 36, so he's avoided last place, but it's hurting. Look at the shoulders being pulled out of their sockets there. What's going to give up first? The grip, the biceps, the shoulders. It's so much pain. He's got himself in the mix here, though, Pope. That's true. And he's got a real good chance now at crocking 55. That puts him into the lead. 56.01. First place for the big American. I'm just grimacing watching that. It wasn't even the hands, the arms, anything. Just completely blacked out there. Couldn't hang on any longer. What a big heart this man has. First World Strongest Man final. And really wanting it badly. Next up, Tamo Mitt. Let's see what he can do. And every man that comes up seems to be conquering these pillars. As you say, 30 seconds is considered acceptable. 30 seconds will probably get you 10th place out of 10 in this world Are you final. Ready? Yes. Take the strain. So Mitt knows that he's going to have to really put in an outstanding performance here. Quite an apt name, really, Mitt. Ten he seconds. does have giant hands. And according to the other Estonians, a bit of a famed grip in his homeland. Those pillars weigh over seconds. 700 pounds. And they try and tear you apart physically and mentally. Eyes shut at the moment, trying to get himself in the zone. Go to a happy place, I think you'd say. There is no more miserable place on the planet, surely than where Tamo Mid is right now when well, he gets to 40. He knows it's 56 is the magic number. Can he get there? He's getting close, but the strain is starting to show. He's at 50. And now it gets really painful. 55, 56, he takes the lead. Can he do the minute? That is incredible. He's close to the world record. And we've got a new world record, Tamo Mitt. It's almost as if his hands are glued to it. This is unbelievable. How far can he take it? It's gone. Finally, 1 minute 11.12. Put that in the history books. He didn't beat the old world record. He shattered it. What a performance from Tamo Mitt. And the world records keep on coming. Tamo, unbelievable event. You smashed the world record, making those 353-pound pillars look easy. Uh, I feel very good, and I, I feel after 40 seconds that I can do that. Do you think that time will hold? I don't know. I have to do maximum because a few more guys after me it wasn't just easy. From Washington State, Latte Land, just outside of Seattle. Well, he'll need a few extra shots in his latte if he's going to get anywhere near the 111.12 that Tom Omit has just set. That is a scary prospect. These two pillars, over 350 pounds each. Ready? Take the strain. And what can Marunde find? Almost an instant movement there, trying to get up high, which is the opposite of some of the other athletes who are bending their head forward. Just putting strain on different parts of the body. Some of them try and lean back, get it on the chest. Others lean forward and get it on the traps. Still a long, long way to go. Listen to these fans giving Jesse Marunde every encouragement. Well, he gets to the first benchmark, 30. He needs to get past 36 to get out of last place. He's done that, but he's already suffering. That's not good body language from Marunde. And this is really starting to hurt, 44.88. Normally, that wouldn't be bad. 
in this field, it's very average. I think Burundi will be very disappointed with himself there after such a great start in the fingers, blowing away Marius. He'll be upset with himself. Well, here is the man himself, the focus of most attention in Chengdu, Marius Puchinovsky. Aiming to join the elite of three-time World Strongest Man ready? winners. Yes. But I think even Marius will look at that time of 1.11.12 and say, that is simply out of this world. To win World Strongest Man these days, you can't have any chinks in the armor. We've already seen it in the Fingles fingers. I think he's very upset with that, and he's got a huge mountain to climb. Psychologically, Marius has never had to come back from such a points deficit. Looking very solid there through the first 25 seconds, the pole. He drops the head. Oh, is it? Trying to look around, trying to think of anything but what those two pillars are doing to his arms. Now he's getting in amongst the contenders. The longer he can hold on, the further up the leaderboard he's going to move in this event. But it's starting to make him pay. And he needs to hang on for a few more seconds to get big points at 48.8. Well, 48. he's never going to get anywhere near that 1 minute 11 of Tom Mitz. That is an unbelievable stat. Well, that was a truly extraordinary feat of strength by the giant Estonian. Don Pope, 15 seconds back in second place. Pujanovski in fourth, but picking up points on Murundi, who finished sixth. But when you look at the leaderboard after, admittedly, only two events, look at Marius Pujanovski. He's down in seventh position, seven points off the pace. Will he stay there? At the moment, that leaderboard looks like a 200-meter race. America, one, two, and three. Indeed, pretty close to living hell for Russia's Elbrus Nigmatulin. He could only manage 13.2 meters of the 22-meter course. The Estonian Tom Omit managed to complete the course in just over 48 seconds. Dave Ostland of the USA was close to the 25-second mark. Then it was the turn of Ralph Baer from Austria. He managed it in 21.15 seconds, finishing behind the Polish veteran Jarek Dimmick. But the current leader is Dominic Filiu of Canada, who set a remarkable time of just over 16 seconds. The biggest man and the heaviest man in the competition currently leading the way. But there are four more athletes to go in what could be a crucial event in determining this year's winner. Well, talk about a pedigree in this competition. Yanni Vertonen, the champion in 2000. And this fella, a two-time winner, Marius Pudzianowski, and the favourite in 2005. Take your positions! And Pudzianowski excels in this kind of event. Ready? But my goodness me, he's going to have to fly to beat Filiu's time. I've never seen Pudzianowski beaten in a fridge carry any kind of super yoke event. He seems to be struggling, staggering a little bit to the left there. He certainly is. Look at that left-hand fridge. It's virtually gone into Vertonen's lane. But the time is sensational. And, oh boy, he has to move fast to get away from those fridges. Vertonen crosses the line as well. Well, he was drifting all over the place. But look at the clock. 15.29. Nearly a full second inside of Filiu. Well, he moved fast, but not quite as fast as those in the front row there. The spectators didn't expect that in the admission price. He certainly didn't. He was drifting, but he knew where that finish line was. Mario's blazing time, but you were drifting into Yanni's lane. Tell us about that. Yes, yes, because uh, I go fast, uh, I won't uh, go straight. I hit his left and down because it's very, very heavy equipment. Do you think you can catch Jesse Morandi? I think so, I think so. Well, what kind of front runner is Jesse Marunde? He got the fast start, but he knows that Marius Puchanowski is now firmly in his slipstream, so the pressure's on. Since 2002, I've been training full-time. I'm bigger, faster, stronger. I just feel like my training is right on right now. I don't have a coach. All I've got is my family. Callie and I have been married for a year and a half now, and uh, it's been the best year and a half of my life. We start a business together. Uh, she does all my diet planning. She's with me uh, through all my training. She's just been the cornerstone of my uh, increase in performance over the last year. I've been training for, for this competition for 10 years uh, with absolute total focus. I haven't missed a beat in 10 years. 
I feel like nothing can stop me from progressing. The whole picture is finally coming together, all the training, the perfect dieting, and uh, I'm ready. So Marundi, second overall, but he knows who's just behind him. A Don Pope from Cleveland, the overall leader. He too is feeling the pressure. So an all-American battle. Ready! Pope's off to the good start. Oh, Marunde's off to a standing start. Now, can Pope keep this thing going? Forget the 15-29. No one's going to get near that. These Americans, though, battling each other. And here comes Marunde. He's timed it well. Look at the clock. Big mistake from Pope there. He hasn't quite lifted it high enough on his shoulders. It's dragging on the ground. 20.73, and Pope is really struggling. Marunde may have started slow, but he's finished brilliantly. And Pope, well, he won't be in the lead after that. A really disappointing finish for Don Pope. 30-35, he will not be number one at the end of this event, that's for sure. World Championships are won and lost on an error just like that, dragging it for the last 10 meters. I don't think he even realized, just slipped down his shoulders as he walked. Yes, Pope will have to settle for eighth. So Pujanovsky is back with a bang, a full second clear of everybody else. Jesse Murundi finishing in fourth spot. And fellow American Don Pope will be bitterly disappointed to come eighth. That really does set him back on his heels. So on a two-horse race, Filiu, Pope, Dimek, all still very much in contention. would keep themselves in contention following the overhead lift as well oh, one of those draining disciplines Dimek would have to settle for nine to keep himself in touch Ralph Bear was able to match that the man in his first World Strongest Man final but the man setting the pace the 402 pound Dominic Filiu well, he's seen that leader, he's nibbled away. It's down to just two now. now how is he going to go against Marius? Isn't it good to see these two fellas, probably the best two log lifters in the field, going head to head. And psychologically, as much as anything, these two right here are going to want to do a little bit of one upsmanship on each other. Take your positions! <laughs> Away we go. We've seen these two compete head to head twice in the Super Series, the qualifying system to get here in this log competition. Guess what? Both times they drew neck and neck. Marios has just moved in front. That's his fifth. Jesse now has five. Just kept his technique together a little bit better, Marius. There's been a couple of wobbles from Jesse, but the pole is, is just like a little machine over there at the moment. Can he get to nine? There's nine. Well, Marundi on eight. He's one behind all the time here, and Marius just doesn't stop. He's really trying to let his rival know who is the boss here, but Jesse's staying right with him. Can he keep it going? Yes, he can, but Marius is still going too. And these two fellas have blasted past the rest of the field. I'm not sure if 75 seconds is going to be enough to split these two. It's so tight at the moment. Jesse's just one rep behind. 12 for Jesse. But is this 14 for Pudzianowski? He's going for it. Are they going to let him have that one? No lift, you're hearing, but 13 will be good enough because Jesse had to stop at 12. And Pudzianowski has sent a message to his closest rival. What a war that was, but I think the best man won. What a great contest that was. Pudzianowski coming out on top just, but it was enough to give him that extra point. And Murundi must be getting worried now. Everybody else trailing in their wake as we have a fantastic duel. East against West, America against Poland. Marius, you were moving so fast. Did you know you had won? Yes, uh, I am a uh, little bit faster. Jesse also is very, very fast and strong. Jesse, you were one behind. Were you able to keep count? Yeah, I knew I could hear his ref making his count. I lost the rep about 
to him about halfway through. I felt like I was flying, but he was going a little bit faster. Only way I would have beat him is if he had made a mistake, and he doesn't do that very often. So Jesse Marundi still has a lead, but it's down to just one point now, and there's three events to go. Can Pujanovsky be champion for a third time? Can Marundi be the first American to win for more than two decades? Yes, it's the squat lift next. Those colourful beer barrels will be dropping their weight, and those fellows will be lifting it. The weights will range from 573 pounds all the way up to 794 if you can lift it with all the additional barrels in. 75 seconds to do it. And here is Ralph Baer, who's doing okay in his first world final. The fellow who's got a baby daughter back home in Vienna, the fireman. Well, this is a fireman's lift with a difference for Ralph Baer. Lift. Let's see how many reps he can do. Those barrels squat. start dropping Good squat. now. Squat. Good squat. Made a mistake there on the second squat. lift going down before the barrel had loaded Good and had squat. to do an extra lift. So if he finishes squat. this, he will have done eight lifts Good in the squat. end. He must be thinking already squat. that is a big mistake. Well, he's blasted his way through five. Squat. But that fifth one hurt. Can he find six? Oh, the power. Now, can he finish it? Lots of time. That face is a definition of determination. And Ralph Bear has done all seven reps. Well, in fact, he did eight, didn't he? That was a big mistake and costly as well. Must have cost him at least seven or eight seconds. And he'll give the others hope, those that think they'll do all seven. Yes, this is how it finished. That's your one for luck, isn't it? Nothing lucky about that, though. All commitment. So Ralph Bear, the only man with seven reps and a pretty useful time as well. But the big guns have still to fire. And here comes the man in third place, Dominic Filiu, the 402-pound Canadian. If he wants to challenge the top two, this Thank is an event position. he's going to have to pick up big points. He's certainly got the physique for it. Well, the first three or four reps should be routine. Squat. Good one, squat. But now the barrels start to roll. Squat. Good squat. Here comes rep number three, and that looked comfortable. He's certainly going to be good for four and five, you would think, on the evidence of three. Four is no problem. Could he go for all seven? The time is looking good. Just amazing as well, squatting without any shoes on. I can't imagine that would help him. Never seen it before in the squat discipline. 38-08 is what he needs. 37-7 is what he's got. Dominic Filiu takes the lead. And that was impressive. Well, what a beast of a guy he is. Look at the size of those quads. 40 inches round each one of those legs. I'll tell you what, that's a giant waist, never mind a leg. But look at the seventh rep. All determination, proper depth. Good squat. So Pudzianowski knows what he has to do. He has to get all seven. And he has to get them in 30 seconds or less. If he wants to take top billing here. Good, Good start, fast as well, lots of speed. He's got to think Good not squat. just of getting all seven, but of beating that squat. clock as well. Good squat. Good rhythm. Squat. Good squat. Oh, he's absolutely squat. flying, isn't he? But let's remember back to the heat. He didn't do all seven then. The weight's exactly the same. He's got to step up to the mark now. Squat. And can he do it? Look at that. Well, it really is amazing. When the pressure's on, this man responds. 27-53. He shattered Filiu's mark by three seconds. Absolutely phenomenal. And as Colin said, he couldn't do all seven in qualifying, but when everybody else is doing seven, you know he will. Marius, all seven barrels. You made it look so easy, was it? Yes, yes, before the competition, or well, train late only because I have six weeks ago, I have injury in biceps. Uh, only train front, back, squat. And now, now it's okay in competition. 
Well, Jesse Morunde has seen that big lead get eaten away and eaten away. And if he can't beat 27.53, he will lose the lead for the first time. So this, a real pressure moment for the man from what? Seattle. And there's some good scores to deal with. Filius 30.77 is his second. We're not even thinking of getting five or six reps here. He must get all seven, and he's got to get them fast. And he said to me before, he was just hoping to get four barrels up in a quick time, try and beat some of the other guys. He knows this is a bit of a weakness for him. Well, he's struggling, isn't he? Is he going to get fifth? Marius is happy enough. Look at that. He's got to five in a good time, but will he get six? It doesn't look too good for him, does it? Can't know. And there's a man who knows he's just gone into first place for the first time. And Marundi played it smart. He blasted through five to get a fast time because he knew he wasn't going to get six. Well, perhaps better than he thought. And that has to be some kind of success. You can see number five, though, was a real grinder. And he just got mousetrapped on six. Well, was that the moment when Marius Pujanowski won his third World Strongest Man Championship? Pujanowski victorious in the squat lift, but Jesse Marundi finishing in sixth, just ahead of his fellow American Don Pope. And what that means at the top of the leaderboard with two events to go is that Pujanowski has a four-point cushion and Marundi is now joined in second spot by Dominic Filiu, the giant Canadian. Can either of them challenge the pole? Has the dominator got one hand on the trophy? That's the ding. And let's have a look and see what's happened so far. First to go, the big man from Estonia. And he put the ding down at 70 meters. He was followed by the former world's strongest man, Jani Virtanen. The Finn gave up at 77.5 meters. It's all about distance, this event. They've got 90 seconds to go as far as they possibly can do. And in case you need reminding, the ding weighs 350 pounds. Yarek Dimek next to attempt to carry that ding as far as you can. It's so difficult just to get a grip on it. Vertinen's 77.5 meters is the benchmark so far with the heavy hitters now to come. And that's the thing, it, it's the bulk and the size of it as much as, uh, as anything, Colin, never mind the weight, that it just, it's just such a difficult thing to get a good purchase on. Very, very awkward. We've seen stones lifted before in Iceland, the Husafell stone. We saw the Africa stone in South Africa. That was a giant piece of metal. But this, very slippy, very awkward, and bicep heavy as well. And this guy just coming back from a biceps injury. Yes, that's right, he had a left bicep tear. You wouldn't know it at the moment, would you? And he's really having to lean back now to keep that ding in his grip. All the way up, right here, right Look at the way his body shape okay. is just changing. He's just leaning further and further back, and these fans realize that he's starting to get to the critical point here. He's slowed right down. Now, once he drops it, that's it. You can't drop it and pick it up, and he's had enough. But that was a good performance from Dimmick, who put absolutely everything he could manage into that. At least he can't go away disappointed with himself. There was nothing left, but you could see he was really suffering. And that ding is cruel. It drains the life out of you. You lose your will to live, and he falls into the embrace of Yoko Ahala, the Finn, who was there as catcher, the former two-time world's strongest man. Well, the bigger they come, the further that ding should travel. That's the theory. Dominic Filiu is about to put it to the test. 402 pounds of prime Canadian maple leaf against 350 pounds of prime Ow. Chinese ding. Who's going to win? Well, trying out a slightly different technique from the others, has very long arms, trying to hold on to the end of the feet. Well, he tried it in training and it lasted for a few seconds without a problem. Well, you would think the fingers would slip off. Well, he knows what he's doing, you would think, but this is one heck of a gamble. And he's had to adjust that grip here, Dominic. And he's just gone for a more conventional grip. Now, you've got to ask the question, why on earth did he go for that grip? And he's in real trouble. And just how much energy is that taking as well? What's he doing with it now? He's just going to flip off his waist if he's not careful. He's in real trouble. Got it all wrong tactically. 
and boy would this fella like to just hit the rewind button and say start again please but you saw it and you thought that's just not gonna work 12 months of training have come down to that giant mistake there it could cost him a place on the podium and you have to feel for him but preparation the question there for Dominic it was never gonna work now Jesse Morunde has lost his lead okay 20 seconds starts now can he get back into the mix he needs a big one here 20 seconds just to pick it up and get the grip 10 seconds down and some of these athletes have needed all of that and just look at Jesse he's uh, gone for a very very high grip and holding the handles but already that ding is starting to just try and exert its gravity and Jesse's not looking happy at all the weight is just so high up on his chest there he's really leaning back there's a lot of pressure on the hamstrings and lower back and they'll soon pump up with blood well, can he challenge Dimmick? Dimmick went about halfway up the third lap. Oh, Jesse really is uh, displaying some mind over matter. The feet splaying further and further apart. The back arching further and further back as that ding insists on going to ground. And Jesse refusing. He's got to go further. And he's taken that step, but every step hurts here, and he's just about hit empty, and there's nowhere to go but back into the arms of Yoko Ahola. Well, a tremendous effort, but when that ding has done its work, you are done. Fantastically brave effort from this man. He's fit, he's fast, but perhaps didn't quite get the tactics right. Pudzianowski will learn from this. Jesse, did you feel your chances of winning the World's Strongest Man title slipping away as you set the ding down? Yeah, I felt, I feel like that sealed my fate there. But uh, hey, I'm still scrapping for second. I'm still in the game. I feel good. Well, Marius Pudzianowski knows exactly what his situation is. If he reaches 70 meters, he cannot be caught. He will be crowned. 2005 world's strongest man but he's seen some very very good competitors struggle with this ding 70 meters from glory are you a gambling man nick i tell you what if you are bet on this guy because this is one of his best events every single time he touches one of these sprinting events he's just unbeatable well they say speed kills marius is destroying this 10-man field and was that a smile on his face? Cross the line, Marius. Okay, good, good. Halfway up this third leg, and he's got it, and I don't think you're going to stop him. You're looking at the new world champion. And he knows it. I wonder how many of these fans know it. And he's just had a little look. And that settles it. You are looking at the yes. 2005 world's strongest man. Was it ever in any doubt? Just an amazing performance from the two times, now three times world's strongest man. So muscular, so fit, so strong. Lays it down in control. Marius, world's strongest man for the third time. How good does that feel? Yes, yes, I am very, very happy. Before uh, uh, to finish uh, Atlas, I have 11 points more. Yes, this is beautiful today. Did you know just how far you had to go carrying the ding? while you were racing? Yes, 90 meters is good. Second guy have 77, I won't only win. Do you think you're the best strongman ever? Maybe, I think so. I won't uh, five times is possible because I am young, young guy. I have now 28 years, uh, possible three, four years compete, maybe five times, I don't know. Would you bet against Pudzianowski next year or the year after that or the year after that? There's confirmation of a quite extraordinary victory in the ding carry by more than 13 metres from everybody else. And Jesse Murundi back in seventh place, which gives Pudzianowski an absolutely unassailable position at the top of the leaderboard with one event still to go. Ten points clear of Murundi, but the battle really is on for second spot. Look at Dimek. We could have a Polish 1-2. And how appropriate that it's Dimek and Filiu virtually going head to head for third place here.
Well, you need a short memory in any sport because you have to put your mistakes and the bad things that happen to you behind you as quickly as you can. But I'm sure somewhere Dominic Filiu is thinking, if only I got my technique right with that ding, I could still be challenging right here for the title. The biggest man in the final against the smallest. And what's wrong with Yarek there? Looks like a little bit of an injury, and I hope it's not that injured bicep from before. Well, he picked the stone up and dropped it, and that's rolled away. And D and Filiu doesn't know what's going on now. The clock's continuing to run, so Filiu's lost some precious time. That is such a shame for the pole. He picked it up, and down it went. So, more drama. Filiu had the disaster with the ding. For Dimek, it's the Atlas stones that have done him, and you wonder if maybe that injured bicep well no it's the other arm but he's definitely done some damage meanwhile Filiu's looking to try and put this fifth one on he's still thinking in terms of trying to get second here ahead of Marunde he's going to get five at 47 21 well not a bad time I think he probably lost four or five seconds there mucking around with that second ball unsure what was going on watching what Yarek was up to perhaps he thought the referee had called it off but no both of them suffered in that one yes Filiu unsure definitely lost some time but that right bicep of Dimek what a way for his world strongest man campaign to end so disappointing for him so Marius can come out and just celebrate now but for Jesse Marundi on the right it's all business he wants to try and keep second spot ahead of big Dominic Filiu they come into the arena for the last time, these two. Marius is milking the cheers. <laughs> I guess a little bit of a good-natured shoulder barge there from the American. And these fans that have enjoyed every minute of this year's World's Strongest Man competition can now see the final act. Jesse Marunde psyching himself up. Polska <laughs> The last act of the 2005 drama, the Atlas Stones. Take your positions. And the only question is, who's going to finish second? Well, the Americans off very fast. Oh, he's gone too fast. Well, all sorts of stuff going on with these Atlas Stones. And the rules are you'll have to bring that round to the front as well. It'll cost them a few extra seconds, and it's a window of opportunity for Filiu. No problems for Marius, but what a mistake. He was too pumped up there, Jesse, maybe. Could it cost him? Remember, Filiu's time, 47-21. The fifth stone for Pudzianowski, 27-49. Absolutely sensational. If you're going to win the world's strongest man title, do it like that. But Jesse Marunde needs this fifth stone just to cement second place. Can he do it? If he doesn't, he could lose it. It looks like he's going to get it. The clock is ticking, 46-33, that's inside Filiu's time. That will confirm the American as runner-up to the man of the moment, Marius Pudzianowski. Well, I think we've got a glimpse into the future there. Jesse Marunde won for the next few years, but Marius Pudzianowski just spectacular. And Marunde nearly had a bit of bad luck. Well, and a little bit too much air in his tyres there, just needed to calm down, pace himself just like the 2005 world's strongest man what a way to sign off top of the leaderboard once again on the atlas stones jesse marunde's fifth place though moves him just ahead of dominic filiu so he's the runner-up and he's with john now how would you uh, sum up your emotions now are you, are you disappointed but pleased at the same time yeah i'm extremely very happy this is uh my first time in the finals my first time on the podium i'm ecstatic to be here uh, of course, it's not good enough, but there's a lot more training to do, and uh, I'll be back at it. Maybe one day I'll be a, the tallest competitor on the platform. And how do you assess Marius as an opponent and as a champion, obviously? Well, he's very intense, but uh, he's also very kind to other competitors. He's helpful all the time and uh, always sharing knowledge. And, uh, you know, I consider him a good friend, but uh, I'd sure like to beat him one of these days. So this is how they finished, a 14-point margin of victory for Marius Pudzianowski. Jesse Marunde, good for second place. He is the future of this competition, surely. Dominic Filiu holding off Yarek Dimek for a podium finish as well, but the pole will be so disappointed with himself. So, the bronze to Canada, the silver to the United States. But no doubt about the gold.
once again for the third time Marius Pushinovsky is the world's strongest man one of the greatest strong men in history perhaps in the greatest form of his life and he now is talking with John you are alongside Magnus Ver Magnussen and the greats of strongman to win it three times. Can you win it four times, five times, six times? I don't know. Uh, I, uh, I have now 28 years old. Yeah, I am very, very young. Possible four years compete is maybe four, maybe five. Uh, I hope. Many congratulations. That's it from China. We'll see you next year. Bye-bye. Thank you. Polska Gurom.